Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is James Lemon. I'm the founder of Atollo, and welcome to Lobby Talks. Uh, today, we're coming live from a real hotel lobby, which is great to hear. But unfortunately, my guest is not in the same building. So once again, it's an entirely online event and something I think we're all adapting to. What's Lobby Talks? Lobby Talks is a once a week conversation uh, for the Atollo community, getting into the heads and experiences of industry leaders, giving them a chance to share what they've learned on their journey, why they've become a mentor of Atollo, and their perspective on the kind of skills and competencies it's going to take to get back to normal and build a stronger, more sustainable hospitality industry for everyone that works in it and all our guests around the world. I've been excited about this one for a while. Welcome to the stage, Martin Kubler. Great to have you with us, Martin. Hello, hello, and um, uh, thanks for having me. Good to have you here. From, uh, from oh, one uh, lobby to the other lobby, as it were. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I, I just realized we wear similar glasses and similar facial hair. This is a bit suspicious. So I feel like... It, we're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't shave off your, um, uh, your hair, you see. I, I, yeah, I, I, you know, otherwise... I'll let biology take its course. No, all good. Look, so Martin, um, you're obviously joining us from a completely different country, a completely different part of the world, but um, let's we'll get into that in a mo. Um, great to have you here. You've been a mentor with, with Atollo really since the beginning with a passion for innovation. I want to dig into your experiences, how you see the industry and some of your wisdom for people. But first of all, we're meeting digitally. It's Lobby Talks. We're in a pretend lobby. Where have you taken us to today? All right. So this is actually the first hotel lobby I've ever, I think, uh, the first hotel lobby I've ever been in. Um, this is the lobby of uh, a hotel called the Bayerischer Hof in Munich in, in Germany. It's a five-star family-owned hotel, and this is where I started my journey in, uh, in hospitality. I did, a, I did an apprenticeship uh, in that hotel for two and a half years. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I still like this lobby uh, very much because, um, I mean, A, because it's properly grand and, uh, uh, you know, sort of truly sort of has a five-star feel, but also because this is it's full of history. So that building, the hotel itself, was um, was created by, well, on order, really, of the, uh, the Bavarian king who said, uh, look here, we don't have a hotel in Munich that has big enough bathtubs. So if, if foreign dignitaries come to uh, come to visit me um, and... You know, we we need a we need a really grand hotel. So then that hotel was built. It was completely um, uh, completely bombed uh, in the Second World War, um, and um, the only thing that was not destroyed was a was a banqueting um, room called uh, the the mirror the mirror hall, and it's, it's essentially a banqueting space with 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 all mirrors on the on the walls, and the owner. Um, essentially built the hotel up around that banqueting room again. He started a restaurant in that after the Second World War, and then, you know, eventually he he rebuilt the entire, the entire hotel to his former glory. And it really is one of those European grand dame of, of, of hotels, that is. It sounds, it sounds absolutely amazing. I, thank you for the history, actually. That sounds brilliant. I mean, you go, you look in this lobby, you go, it's an amazing lobby. There's a lot of amazing lobbies in the world, but probably not that many hotels with that kind of rich history. The stories it can tell, the stories I'm sure many of the staff can tell <laughs> would be pretty would be pretty, pretty fascinating. Really good stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Martin. So look, you know, it's been a while since we sat down and had a chat. Yeah, our first section is called Your Career in 60 Seconds. You feel up for the challenge? We'd love to hear about your background. All right, fair enough. Then uh, is there a countdown? Um, so, uh, as I said, you know, look, I started uh, I started my career in that sense with an apprenticeship. It was two and a half years in that hotel we've just seen the lobby of, running through essentially all departments of, of the hotel and, and uh, sort of the more common ones like service and front office, but also uh, some really sort of not so, um, not so uh, uh, common ones like uh, the flower shop, uh, uh, the printing shop, um, this type of stuff. So I did that. After that, I went to London. I studied, uh, I studied in international hospitality management and once that was over i joined the uh, Bissell hotels as uh, as an assistant night manager and eventually um, became night manager in another uh, Thistle property and from there i moved to uh, assistant front office manager and uh, from that was all still with Thistle, and I then um, went into a Central London Independent Four Star. That doesn't exist anymore. It was called the Bonington Hotel in Southampton Road, in London. And um, I started out as front office manager and became front of house manager, overlooking also reservations, uh, all of that. 
and uh, that was about the time when I got fed up with uh, with the UK and I wanted to see something a little bit uh, sunnier and warmer. So um, I got a job in Dubai with Accor. I stayed um, I stayed with Accor as front office manager in Dubai for uh, about two years. I then um, moved on to Qatar uh, with Wyndham as a uh, as a rooms divisions manager. Um, did that for about a year and a half. Uh, we opened uh, we opened an extension to uh, to a fairly large window motel in in Doha at the time. And after that, uh, came back to Dubai, um, back to independent hotels, uh, and I opened what at the time was the the first European family owned luxury hotel in Dubai. Um, as operations manager first, and then as as, as uh, GM as hotel manager, and um, yeah, so did that for two years, I think two three years, uh, and after that I went independent and I started my own companies, and it's been going. I've I've been doing consulting, um, training, and mentoring ever since. Very cool, very cool, and 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 you sound like you moved around a lot. How important is it, do you think, to get different experiences of different companies? in your kind of path to GM or in your path up the career ladder? Do you think it's better to move around a bit or do you think it's kind of better to stay in one place on reflection? I think it's, I mean, obviously you could do both, right? There is no right or wrong, but I personally think it's, it's, it's really nice and it's really beneficial if you move around. You want to see the entire width and breadth that our industry has to offer. Uh, I mean, it's, it's all good to say I, I only work in five star hotels, but uh, but it's just part of it. Okay, I mean you need to see also how how two star, three star, four star hotels operate, uh, how branded hotels operate via independence, um, such like. So if you can move around, either like changing changing companies and changing um, changing uh, hotel types as it were, all countries even, uh, so much the better. Yeah, it makes sense. I suppose if you believe that like every experience teaches you something and every person you meet teaches you something, just the more touch points, the more experiences you have around the industry, you've got to believe you've got a bigger range yeah. of experiences to fall back on for making your next choice. No, I love that. Yes. Really priest. And I have to point out, it wasn't quite 60 seconds, but we'll forgive you because it's an illustrious career, Martin. <laughs> so like, yeah. No timer, I'm, I'm, you know, no countdown know, well, timer. I'll, I'll have a timer for next time we meet, just in case. Look, our, our next section's called Good Day, Bad Day. And I think everyone loves hearing the stories around hospitality. And I'm sure you've got a few having such a diverse background. Yeah, o over to you. Maybe you could take us through, you know, the best day of your career, the worst day of your career, and share a couple of your stories. I mean, there's been, uh, as you said, look, there's been a number of, of uh, both good days as bad and as well as bad days. But uh, if we start with the good days, I think um, certainly one of the best days was uh, when we finally did get the hotel in um, in Dubai open, uh, the Bonington. It was, uh, it was um, the circumstances were really tricky and it opened right into the financial crisis at the time. Uh, so, so everything got everything got delayed. We finally managed to throw the doors open. We had a really big and really good. Uh, uh, opening event, um, and I think that was certainly one of the one of the best days when you can then see um, the results of your work and then everything paying off and everything sort of coming to life. Uh, the building that you've sort of walked through uh, before for like months and on end, and, and uh, at stages you, you know you think that this is never going to work like this is never going to open and eventually it does and uh, so that, that was that was certainly um uh, a, a very good day um for very bad days i think i mean we all try and forget the um uh, the bad days don't we um and and, and often in hindsight you also think like me uh, this may have been rubbish at the time but uh, but it really wasn't that big a deal uh, like we all have these encounters with customers and such like but um i i don't know i mean perhaps one of the uh, one of the worst days was when i was um uh in my first position in uh, in dubai and it was it was the height of the summer so we're talking temperatures of like 40 45 degrees uh centigrade and the electricity failed in the entire, uh, essentially in the entire city and our part of the city for, for some reason was one of the last to get the electricity back. So we were looking at about eight, nine hours uh, uh, in a really busy convention center hotel without uh, without much electricity. We did have some backup, but uh, really only to power the the front facing it uh, there were no lifts there was no uh, there was no cooling there was uh, there was nothing in that sense right uh, we were all 
standing there um, sweating uh, like uh, like crazy uh, guests were like you know um, uh, um, I mean some guests sort of you know he was simply getting too hot with guests fainting up yeah that was not uh, now necessarily a very pleasant day uh, also because uh, if you're used to running everything on on technology, you're used to running everything on IT, and then suddenly you have to do it manually. A lot of it uh, that becomes extremely tricky and um, not super pleasant. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. So go on. I guess how did you solve a situation like that? I can't even imagine how hot it must have been. I mean, is it kind of point we have to shut the hotel, or do you find a way to? <laughs> No, I mean we walked around it, obviously. Um, we just made sure that we uh, uh, we kept the entrance doors closed as much as possible, but I still meant it heated up to some extent. Um, I mean, our front-facing guys were taking turns standing in the freezer, uh, so you got like your ten minutes chilling in the freezer. Uh, uh, which you, can't the chef, the, you can't put the guests you, in the freezer, though, Martin. I guess. No, no. Also, because the chef was already not uh, super happy about it, because uh, obviously he had stuff in the freezer that you know he didn't want to defrost, and nobody knew when the when the electricity was uh, was coming back. But um, uh, yeah, no. Well, look, uh, and, I, and I think this this really is also a sign of of good hotels and good hotel teams okay so in the end we we just made it happen right and i mean we all like to say it is like and then also from a guest perspective uh, if if things i mean very often from a guest perspective you don't realize the trouble that people are actually in right you don't realize the trouble that the hotel operations in uh, because it's just all kept in the uh, kept in the background and, and and i think that that is the sign also of a successful successful hotel team that you can make this happen yeah. Uh, I, I remember when, when I first started working in hotels and you chat to GMs, I was always amazed that you managed to get a little bit of their time because they'd always come from 10 tasks and they were always on their way to another five or 10. That just feels like the hotel industry is for people who like lots of stuff going on, right? Every day, different challenge. Even one day can have 10 different challenges. Is that, is yeah. that kind of, is that, is that the big lesson here? You just have to be able to spin yes. a lot of plates? Um, I, I, I think that's very true. I mean, if you're the type of person who does not, um, like who wants to really sort of focus on one thing at a time, um, then then I, I don't know, maybe become a revenue manager or, or, or a financial, uh, you know, director of finance, this type of stuff. But um, but no, I mean, this, this, see, this is what I always enjoyed in hotels. Okay, I enjoy that uh, uh, every day, different story, every hour, different story type of type of scenario. Yeah, no, exactly. I think if you can learn to thrive on it, right, you thrive on the people, you thrive on their reactions and the and the challenges in front of you. No, I love that. I love that. Well, look, we love to talk about kind of the world's best or our favorite hotel experiences so our, our next section is called last stay on earth and it's really just about you know obviously i wouldn't wish a last stay on earth to anyone but you know we'd love to know what would be your perfect hotel what would be your perfect restaurant what would be your perfect event if you just had kind of one more hospitality experience left in you <sighs> I mean, this is obviously uh, uh, this is obviously super difficult um, because there are so many great hotels uh, uh, out there that could be um, uh, that could be the last uh, uh, the last day on earth as it as it were. Okay, uh, I mean, I would I, I really wouldn't mind returning in that sense, returning back to the roots and staying at the uh, staying at the Bayerische Hof once again, which I haven't done. Funny enough, I always wanted to do that, and I always said, like, okay, once I make money, I'll come back, and I, you know, I'd be a guest. I've never managed. Well, well now uh, that you've featured them on our show, you know, we'll 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 tag them, Martin. You, you'll probably get an invite now. <laughs> well, I should I should jolly well hope so. Yeah. Um, so, so I could do that. I could also do um, I could also do an ice hotel somewhere near the Nordic Circle. Right. Um, I think this would this would also be um, this would also be pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't mind uh, returning to the um uh to the Taj Mahal in in uh, in Mumbai which I you know which I personally think is, is one of the best hotels I've ever had the pleasure of staying in um so so these would all be options uh, in terms of uh, uh in terms of the last meal again I mean you know uh, so long as it's vegetarian I'm up for uh, uh, I'm up for everything um and I really don't have uh, you know I'm not super picky it could be a uh, it could be a roadside joint somewhere in um, uh, somewhere in Southeast Asia, or it could be a proper sit-down affair in a uh, in a nice um, a fine dining um, environment. And uh, what else did he say? Ah, oh, events, uh, events-wise. Yeah, I don't know. Um, 
but as much as I like participating in events, um, uh, I'm not really in that sense an event type of person. I mean, you wouldn't now necessarily find me at concerts or at you know um, such type of things. I think uh, look, I always enjoyed I always enjoyed the Arabian travel market in uh, uh, in Dubai, um, where the world of travel then, then, then comes together. Uh, and um, I suppose uh, that would make a fitting, uh, that would make a fitting last event, you know, in that sense. Very cool. So you, your last event of ever on earth, Martin, and it's it's work. You basically want to go to a travel conference. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, if, you, if you're talking private, okay, I mean, outside I thought this is about work in, in Korea. Um, no, obviously, I mean, there, there, there would be, uh, there would be in that sense, uh, other options, okay. Uh, I mean, no, no, there's no wrong answer. If you want to go to a work event for your last time and say goodbye, really, uh, if you're looking, if you're looking, yeah, if you're looking at work, just because I always feel that in in hospitality, like it's, it's an industry that defines you more than any other. Okay, like you really are, or, or a lot of us really are in that sense. We are hospitality. Okay, uh, it's, it's not something that you can you you ever truly shake. Okay, and you notice this when 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 you walk through another hotel and you find a piece of rubbish lying at the floor and you actually pick it up. Type of thing, right? Um, even so, it's not even your hotel, right? Um, so so there, there there is quite a um, uh, connection. I always find. No, that makes sense. That makes complete sense. Makes complete sense. And, and what's, what do you think the common thread is between those amazing hotels you talked about, like the Taj Mahal in Mumbai, and the amazing kind of restaurants that you've got in mind? What is it that it takes to build that kind of service culture that creates that guest experience? But yeah, you know, you've obviously you've led hotels, you've consulted right across the industry. What what is some of that secret sauce? Um, I think what 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 really. Is at the bottom of all of it is is um, communication flow and empowerment. Uh, so obviously you need to have, uh, or the, the the best teams I always find, um, the best teams are those that that communicate really well and that communicate well on all on all levels. Uh, we all know what hierarchies are like in in hotels, but if you can break this down, if you can break down the silos between the different departments, so that people from different departments have no issue talking to each other, um, then you're already a big step forward. Okay. The worst thing is places where front office uh, doesn't like to talk to. Um, they don't like to talk to housekeeping, um, uh, or nobody ever likes to talk to finance. Um, so, so you have these you have these silos. Once you manage to break down these silos, then I think uh, we're set for we're set for greatness. You know, communication. Yeah. Because then you can build on that, and you can say, all right, now we know how to communicate. We know it's about empowerment. So now it's about getting people to or empowering people to do the job that they're here for, whatever it is. If you're front facing to 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 look after the guests, and you know, but but all of that hinges on communication. Yeah, no, I think you're. I think you're absolutely right. As soon as you get those teams functioning, and and it's about it's about making sure that no one feels like they would be to blame. Right? It's okay to put your hands up and say you don't have the answers, and giving people a chance to come in and support. I think nice and quickly. I've definitely I've definitely been in businesses where functions are kind of throwing rocks at other functions, and the only person that suffers is the guest. Right? No one ever feels good about it, and and it's crazy because you take teams out socially, and people can really get on, but suddenly you come into your work function. What is it? People becoming quite protective. Perhaps, yeah, but you also area. have to. Yeah, you also have to remember that in the end, um, uh, obviously every hotel has guests, but we are also each other's guests. So I mean, everybody from other departments, everybody in my department, essentially is a guest. Okay? Uh, and and in that sense, um, it's very rare that you would. I mean, you, you you wouldn't close your door to a guest if they have a if they have an issue. Okay. Uh, I mean, whenever possible, you try and be there and 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 and, and you know address the issue. Yeah, and we do, and and hosp we do have a huge culture of giving back and hospitality, don't we? I mean, that's one of the reasons why I think mentoring is so ripe for the industry because actually, you know, what we we really want to help people, whether it be a guest, whether it be someone on your team, or whether it be broader people in the industry. I think it's about saying, look, you know what, we've got this experience, we've got this passion. Give us a chance to give back. Give us a chance to share. I think is key. Yeah, I mean it's also because it bridges that it, it mentoring bridges that gap between between um, the theory which you get at university um, and the practice which you get uh, in in working in companies. Right, uh, the, the, there is there is a gap here, and, and mentoring helps to bridge that gap. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. So, so kind of talking about mentoring, talking about giving back. Our, our, our last section is called the guest book, and yeah, you know, when you leave a hotel. 
perhaps slightly in the olden days, you know, you'd leave a review, you'd leave top tips for the next guest. And we like to try and do that for the future leaders of the industry. So Martin, maybe you could share some of your best advice, your wisdom, if you like, learn from all of those years of kind of working in and leading hotels and teams. Don't book a room that's right next to the lift. Uh, because these days you always have talking lifts. So um, you got woken up a lot by the lift saying doors opening, doors closing. No, but I mean, you were talking you, you about... Heard, you heard it here first. That is, there we uh, go. <laughs> no, no, you're talking about tips for leaders. I think um, the best one is, okay, you've got to learn how to... Um, I mean, ours obviously is a management also is, is a management job that requires a lot of walking around. We, we all know that, okay, we're not stuck at the desk, uh, but walking around is one thing. The other thing uh, that's perhaps even more important is you've got to ask, uh, you've got to learn how to ask questions. You also got to realize that no question really is too stupid. Um, and that by asking questions, uh, you're showing people that you're interested in the job that they're doing. Uh -huh. um, and you're giving them the chance to to a explain what it is that they're doing uh, to you, which so you can learn something, but also by also they by thinking about what it is that they're doing, um, actually sort of get to reflect and and, and and get to learn something, right? And that then again uh, forms a basis for uh, for communication. For uh, all right, now we know more about each other, and we can sort of we can work together better, and we can we can get on to to. To the next level so i think um one of the most important things really is 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 that asking question type of thing this is also super handy if you're ever anywhere um if you're in a new place like you're just starting in a new place and none of us always you know none of us knows everything right but at the same time a lot of us don't want to come across as totally stupid so uh, they don't want to say like hey, hang on a second i don't even i don't actually know this there's nothing wrong with admitting this but but still okay so so a great thing is then just ask loads of questions and and carefully listen to the answers, because then um, it doesn't really sort of look like uh, okay, it looks interested uh, and and um, uh, and you will actually learn something, okay? and people will find that okay, uh, maybe they will think this is a really stupid question to ask, but but there aren't really any stupid questions, right? The, the important thing is to ask questions and to to, to sort of carefully listen to the answer, and then um, that really is the basis for for in my opinion, for successful management. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I, I again, yeah, we're, we're probably preaching to the converters here. I, I completely agree. The, the opportunity to ask questions of anyone, right? Peers, line managers, leaders from across the industry, it's such a gift. And, I, and I, it always surprises me that people who say they want to get ahead, say that they are kind of trying to pick up some new skills, don't just take, take that opportunity. And ultimately, that's what mentoring is about at its core. Right? It's about asking questions, listening to the answers on the sides of the mentors and the mentee. So I don't quite know how you build that culture where people feel really comfortable asking lots of great questions. It's obviously something we're trying to do on Apollo and could definitely do a better job. Any, any thoughts? Um yeah, I mean, there's something that you really just have to, you have to remind yourself on a, on a daily basis that, that this is what you have to do, okay? Because another advantage of this is that it actually, um, it can actually save you money. Because very often, uh, especially once once you're in management, and whether this is in a department level or higher, okay, you come across situations where you think that you know what's going on, and, um, and uh, you think you have the solution. And you go like, all right, just fix it uh, and do it this way. And it then turns out that uh, your solution, it might well fix the problem, but it might do so more slowly or more expensively than, um, uh, than uh, the solution that the people on the floor would have had had you only asked them. Okay. Uh, so asking questions is is is, is just uh, um just like the, the swiss army knife of of uh, of hotel management right i mean it's really yeah. sort of the most useful thing you could do you know and uh, uh i don't know how much time we have left but uh, i mean one of the greatest examples for this um i i've seen at the at the very beginning of my career uh funny enough also at night when um when one of the dishwashers broke down uh at the hotel i was doing my apprenticeship in and at the same time um a, a huge function was going on a uh, couple of thousand people there in the ballroom and we all know what that's like so within a like, couple of minutes there were plates and glasses everywhere in the entire kitchen and the chef was screaming and such like you know? and the chief um the chief steward came to um 
uh, came to the dish or just and he was like, oh, what's the matter, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, machine is broken. Well, I'll just get, you know, I'll fix it. You know, blah, blah. Um, so, um, uh, and then he was like, I know this is, is, is this particular thing. Okay, we've got to call. Uh, uh, we've got to call maintenance. And then, uh, anyway, so there was a long delay while maintenance was coming, and eventually they fixed it. Right, uh, and once the cheese yard was gone, uh, the um, one of the guys they were saying, you know what this is? This is really easy. You just open one side panel. You you take a hammer. You, you like you know, you hammer one little bit there, and then you close the panel again and press the button, and off you go. Okay, we could have had this fixed in like five minutes. Uh, but, um, but because the guy didn't ask the right questions and because uh, people saw him as a like, you know, role of authority, uh, they went with um, what he wanted, uh, how he wanted it done. And as a result, um, it wasted a lot of time and probably also wasted, uh, in that sense, a lot of money. You know? Yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. So look, let's just kind of chat a little bit about your mentoring with Atollo. Obviously, you know, for those that don't know, for probably what fifteen months now, you've been running a regular innovation and coffee sessions. People can join your group and kind of use you for advice, tips, general industry discussion. As you've said, we've now switched that to an open group. So really anyone who's interested in innovation hospitality can drop thoughts in the group, connect with you, jump on a call. What, what kind of topics do you think you'll be covering in the next few months? Why, what, why should people be kind of thinking about connecting with you around innovation on Atollo? Um, firstly, because I think innovation is, is, is a much um, under-talked, if that's a word, uh, uh, topic in, in, in our industry. Um, what we're going to talk about, uh, I suppose um, we'll get a lot of topics from the, the recovering of the industry or the, the recovery process of the industry from the pandemic in the different um, in the different locations in the different countries, um, because um, as we've seen, uh, the pandemic, other than the, the the sort of you know negative impact it had on our industry, also to some extent a positive impact in the sense that uh, a lot of people have realised that we can't keep doing the things the same way we did it all these years before. Right? So a certain amount of change is occurring. Uh, and uh, people are finding new ways to doing to doing all things, um, and and I think that's something that's going to be a lot more important now going forward. Uh, also, how to achieve results with um, with fewer resources. A lot of us are very um, pushed or very pressed for uh, uh, for resources, um, either budget wise or human resources wise. Uh, and again, here like looking at things. From, from a different perspective, looking at things from a, a is there another way of doing it, um, can, can, can be really helpful. Yeah, that makes sense. No, I think you've, you've hit on pretty much all the big themes in the industry there, right? You know, you've got customer expectations are changing and we need to make sure that yeah. our hotels are ready for that. There's a real pressure on productivity and cost. So how can we do the same jobs or these newer jobs better? And then I also think there's a talent piece as well that people want to work for businesses where, you know, you can work on innovation projects and you can change things and you're working with newer technologies and, and, and newer processes. You know, who wants to be trained for six months on some 40 year old bit of bit of tech right you, you want to join an industry that's thinking about the future so I, I really think whether people are starting their careers whether they're leading teams running businesses now is the time to be embracing some of the the change that's out there and some of the innovation yeah i i, I agree and it's also um it's a matter of that right? people who are joining the industry now are um they obviously it's a totally different generation okay and that the you know that generation Travels differently. It, it, it selects hotels differently. It uh, it selects restaurants differently. It, it, it expects totally different things. So um, so that needs to be incorporated as well. Love it. Totally agree. Totally agree. Martin, on that note, unfortunately, we've run out of time together, but a massive thank you from me and, of course, the whole Atollo community for the time that you give to kind of mentor and support the next generation of people and, of course, give back to Atollo. It's been, it's been fab having you here today. You're most welcome, and thanks for having me. All good, all good. All right. For those of you listening, uh, watching on demand, we have a uh, another Lobby Talks next Tuesday. We're going to be chatting with Dee Burrows. And Dee has spent uh, a, a load of time running, going through hotel operations and the events industry. Now she switched her skills to talking about mental health. And we're launching this week our Early Careers series on uh, Atollo. We've got career sessions every Thursday night. We've got discussions on the platform. And mental health is such a critical part of how we rebuild this industry and its 
helps people in a really sustainable way. So really excited to chat about, chat to Dee and hear some of the tips that she's got. At any point, please leave us some feedback and let us know kind of how we're doing, what we can do better. Come and join the discussion on myatolo.com. It's completely free to join, set up a profile, find yourself some connections, um, and really look forward to the discussion. In the meantime, stay safe, and thanks so much for joining. Thanks, Martin, and see you soon, everyone. Bye-bye.